Welcome back to Ready, Set, Sold. I'm your host, Brian Boat. Uh, one of the things I failed to mention last uh, last segment was is you can also catch us on Facebook. We're, we're kind of everywhere. And uh, the last segment was is the, the, the need for the improvements that we talked about last week, but also talking about what not to update. Many times, you know, the intent is good. The intent that sellers want to do is they want to make those improvements, and that's always great. But unfortunately, sometimes they make those wrong improvements. And probably the first rule of thumb you should look at is to concentrate your improvements and upgrades on pre-existing living space, not adding more. I cannot stress that enough. Stick with what you have. Focus on your above level. So you have a basement. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do things with your basement. It just means you really want to focus your improvements on the up stairs where the living space where most of the time is spent what you don't want to do and we just heard a story or just heard a story not too long ago that they put on a sunroom it was something that they wanted they thought it would add more value the cost of putting that on there was something in the in the neighborhood of 15 and twenty thousand dollars, which maybe for most people like that, that that's a chunk of change but even if it's not the square footage of adding that on is anywhere from four, five, six times the value of your home of your location. So the square footage, let's say your house just in rough figuring, and this is not a way that you want to evaluate the house, but just to kind of give you an idea, maybe it's $50 or $75 a square foot. When you're looking at the space that you get, which is not usually a lot, and the cost, that can be three and four times more. So the idea of getting your money back, if anything, is, is it just simply, I've never seen it happen just in my professional uh, career, and it's been, like I said, over 16 years. It just doesn't happen. Same thing with hearth rooms. Anytime you're looking to add on living space, you want to stop. You want to get the book. Okay, that's one way. Or talk to your agent. You know, get an agent involved. It's never a bad idea to get your agent involved early in the process. We've worked with people a year, two years down the road. They're, they're planning, getting into the preparation of it. Your agent shouldn't have a problem with that. It can give you some information, give you some tips, it can save you some money uh, that's in the book. Also, the basement. And, and the basement, just a quick story, happened not too long ago. And again, uh, the seller's had lived in the house they had an unfinished basement lived there i think for about 10 years i think they they lived in o'fallon o'fallon shiloh area and during that period of time it just seemed like all their neighbors had finished their basement and they saw the prices of what the basement was going for with those houses you know did sell far and and i believe it was again the price ranges was between maybe 240 and 255 something along those lines and they saw people getting that and they know they didn't have a finished basement so again watching some of the shows that is on the uh on, on cable especially the east coast west coast feeds that that they have they got the idea that they needed to finish that basement before they could do anything well in many cases, it took a lot longer than they thought. They were thinking that maybe it would only take a month, but one thing led to another, and it was three months in, so that's delayed the cost. You know, it's typical is $30,000, but the situation went even a little higher. And long story short, when they finally put their house in the market, they did sell their home, and they sold it for in that price range, I think something like two fifty, dollars something along those lines. And that was great, but the trouble was that they put in $40,000 in. So what's the alternative? The alternative is if you don't have a finished basement, it is going to ha have some effect on the pricing of it. But in that situation, it may be in a, very simply, we've seen it in the past where it's like $225,000. Maybe it's not $250,000, maybe it's two thirty. dollars maybe your price range is two th twenty to two thirty. dollars In that situation, again, you save $15,000, $20,000 that you didn't have to spend, or even more than that. So that's that's the thing you have to understand is 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 take your house where you're at. If you don't have a finished basement, that's okay. That is perfectly fine, even if all your neighbors do. There may be some fluctuation, but it's usually not as much as what most people think. Again, basements are good, but usually, even by the appraisal's uh, estimation, they usually value that what we've talked to, the appraisal we've talked to, maybe by a third. I mean, it might be, it isn't the same value as your uh, uh, above ground. So always remember when you're making these improvements, when you're looking at that, as I said before, I can't stress this enough, 
focus on your living space you're using right now. Now, when we talk about basements, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do anything to the basement, especially depending on how long it's been. I uh, had a situation where it had been a very long time, been 20 years. They still had wood paneling down, the old dark wood paneling. The carpeting was not good at all. Well, in that situation, they simply pulled the carpeting out. They actually painted the wood. Just so you know, you can paint just about anything. It is amazing. If you haven't done any painting or you haven't heard about painting, uh, it is truly amazing. I'm not sure what you can't paint, and, and it also is made to last. So this situation, what they did was is they had it downstairs. They put in new flooring. They put in new carpeting. They put in... They they did the painting, they made it like an off-white color, took the wood away from it, and they put it on the market, and it was like in seven to ten days, uh, it was just gone. They'd already done the updating uh, 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 above ground, and that was the one thing they had to do. So again, it's not that you need to ignore the basement, depending on the condition. That might be a situation of bringing the realtor, giving them a you know an appraisal. They can kind of look at it, see what you may need to do. But a good rule of thumb is, again, it doesn't mean you ignore the basement, but you, you don't usually have to do near as much. There's just not as near as many things in a basement that you have to concern yourself with than in your normal living space when you have the kitchens and all the uh, all the bathrooms are usually upstairs and 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 the flooring in the bedrooms and things of that nature so so that's the thing that you want to really uh, to focus on so you can have that success you can have those updatings and it becomes it becomes uh, almost and that's the thing i think sometimes people really don't know they don't know the power of these updatings and they really we talked about it last week but people when you have those updates that your house becomes just so much valuable in buyer's mind for various reasons uh just the fact is that uh, you have the updates it's ready to move in there's so many pluses to that but again when you make the wrong improvements and they talked about before that you had someone that probably lost forty thousand dollars we've seen people add hearth rooms or sunrooms and losing twenty thousand dollars and we're talking serious money that if, again, either they had the book, they used the book, or they just contacted an agent, understood the local market, they wouldn't have had to do. And that's, that's really important. So what we're going to be talking about the next segment is, just kind of give you a quick preview, is talking about the outside of your home. And one of the things you have to keep in mind is one of the factors you, on the outside of the home is, is the appraisal process. And most people are aware of the appraisal process to some degree. It's something like appraisers I've talked to, 20 years of experience. I mean, we're talking, it's in the like 90, high, middle 92 to 94%. I'm not sure which one it is. They put value in the living space, current living space. They give some credit down to the basement. Again, it isn't near as much as the above ground living space. But the outside, that's, you know, the last 5% is located for the outside of your home. And it's important to know that because when if you're putting money in the outside of your home, what we're going to talk about next segment, that's probably not a very good idea as far as return on investment. Hey, go get the book. It's free. There's no, no strings attached to it. If you use someone else, that's fine. It just has valuable information. Go to readysetsold.org, not.com, readysetsold.org, not.com. Get the book. Get it today. Hey, you listen to Ready, Set, Sold with your host, Brian Vogt. We'll see you in a few minutes. 